In this series of videos, we're covering apps that's similar to Brick Breaker. And in this specific video, we're going to go over how to set up the bar, the user's bar, and the ball that are on the screen, right? So right now we just have them on the screen at any point uh, in the canvas. And we actually want to set these up not in the designer, we might want to lay out some values in the designer, but we're actually going to set them up in the block screen. And so when we think about it, we want the bar start at the middle of the screen or the canvas as far as the width. And it's going to move left and right with the user uh, drag but it's not going to move up and down. So we want to pick a good spot for that bar, right? So we want the initialize event and we're going to set up the bar sprite first, right? So we look at all our blocks and we have a procedure that says move to, and that allows us to move to a specific X, Y location. And so that's how we're going to set up our initial values for the bar sprite. And if we think about halfway, what we want is the width of the canvas over 2. So we take the division block, and halfway in x is the width of the canvas. We have to grab the width of the canvas. And we simply want 2 as the literal. Right? And the Y, we just want the Y to be somewhere near the bottom, but with a enough space to allow the ball to go past the paddle or the bar and then get lost. Right? So eventually in the game, if a bar hits the bottom edge, it will lose the ball, right? lose your life. But uh, for now, we'll just pick a value. So again, we want to base it on the actual values of the canvas. So we used width for x, because that's horizontal. And we're going to use height for y. right? And so our height value we don't know it, it's based on the canvas, and our canvas tries to fill most of the screen. So we're just going to say we want 0.85. That seems like a good value. At least 15% of the height below the bar, and 85% above. So if we think about the bar, and we have example, right? We think about the bar and we have this just shape, rectangular shape, the actual spot we're moving to half of the width is this XY point, right? So the XY of our sprite is the top left corner of that sprite. So it's not the middle, what we think we're moving, right? So if we were moving the middle point, we'd be able to get by with game play canvas width over two. However, we're moving the top left corner, right? So we actually have to go through and pivot this whole X point to right here, right? So we want that point which means we need to add half of the width of the bar, right? So to go from the left corner to halfway, the midpoint of the top, we have to add half the width of the sprite, okay? So we're going to actually take our division block still, but we're going to stick it inside a subtraction block. Right? So if we take half the width and we adjust it, 
right, by the player sprite. So we'll duplicate this division block. We don't want the gameplay canvas anymore. We want the sprites width. So now we've gone and said, okay, position the X at half the width and then subtract, right, subtract half the width of the sprite, which means we're going to move further left, right, because we're subtracting, which means we're adding less, all right, so we're moving this point that we have circled to the left a little bit more, okay, it's precisely such that we can move this point where this was, right? So now our midpoint is at halfway in the width of the canvas, right? And we'll still leave our height at 85%, but we also want to do a little bit of subtraction so that we accommodate that point, right? We actually want the bottom left corner to be at 85%. Okay, so we stick that there and then we subtract off the height. So in that case, we're moving this bottom left corner up. Okay, so shifting where the XY, right? So we're always referring to this x, y. Where are we putting this top left corner? Well, now we want it at 85%. That was fine. But if we shift it one height less, right? if we're subtracting, we're going up, which means we're moving it up here, and we're also moving it over. So we're shifting the whole rectangle a little bit to the left and a little bit up so that the bottom left corner is at our midpoint and then we shift it left so that our middle is at the center. So once we're done, this point, our midpoint on our bottom of our paddle will be at 85% of the height, halfway across the canvas. So that's the paddle. Now we think about the ball. We also have to set the ball, and we have similar problems with the ball. Right? So if we move it exactly to where our halfway point was, right? So if we're doing similar calculations and getting the halfway point, right? We want the width divided by two, okay? What's different about the ball though is we have the XY in the center of the ball. So unlike the paddle where the XY was the top left, the ball, the x, y is the center. So as long as we move it directly on the center, we're good. But now we have to think about where do we want it for the y, and if we also move it directly at the 85%, we end up with something like this in our picture, right? So this is a little bit exaggerated to emphasize, but our ball is on top of the paddle. We wanted it slightly above the paddle, but instead, if we set the x, y to half and 85%, then we need to move it up. So we can use the same parameters, but we're actually going to use the sprite, right? So we've set the sprites x, y, and now we just want the ball to be in the center of the sprite. We know the center of the bar sprite is at half the width, 
but we also know the y. Okay, so we need a subtraction block and we can get the y of our sprite. Okay, as we discussed, the y and the x refer to the upper left corner. So now we're going to be stuck like this. If we don't subtract anything, we're stuck with a circle or a ball in the middle of our paddle. Okay, so if we look, all you have to move the ball to get it on top of the paddle or resting on the paddle is move the radius, right, the xy up. Right? So we want to move it up twice so that it's not in the paddle. Right, so we look at that, we can grab the radius. The radius is set, so we can look at the property really quick. All right, we set all of these initially for the ball in x, y, but we're resetting those. We set the radius to two, okay? So we know that it's two, but we don't wanna hard code those values, so we use the property directly. And in order to move up one diameter, our radius needs to be multiplied by two. All right, so now we should end up with the ball resting on top of the paddle when we're looking at our app. And that is how we set up our initial layout of our interface. So we had this and we didn't really pick values and now we've moved them using math to the center of the canvas such that there's a little bit below the paddle for the ball to eventually go past and then the ball will always start on top of the paddle or the user's bar, right? It's resting, looking like it's resting on top of it.